This podcast is produced by the Harwood Productions Podcast Network. To learn more about the network and to find more of our shows, visit us online at www.harwoodpodcast.com. Hi, I'm Helene Woods, and this is Let's Quilt, episode number 32. This morning we're going to start working on our table toppers again and we're going to do our roses and I have Robin here again to help us get started on this and so Robin what are we going to do first? Well the first thing we need to do is uh, cut out the pieces for our roses and in a previous um, episode we we did cut these out. If you do not have them cut out you need to stop and do that. We can't go any further without the pieces. Uh, if you don't have freezer paper and you um, are using regular paper or uh, template plastic, we're going to do something a little bit different. And what you're going to do is take your piece and lay it down on your fabric. And you're just going to take a pencil and draw around that shape. Now, this is not exact, and don't worry if you don't follow the exact shape. It'll all be just fine. But you're going to draw around each and every little shape and then cut it out. Notice on your pieces that you have transferred numbers and they go from one through eight and this uh, is going to help you construct your rows and it's going to help us get these in the right order. So we're going to start out with uh, piece one, two, and three which are actually our leaves and they're on the very bottom. So for my leaf fabric we're choosing green. So I will just lay Uh, my freezer paper on here. Now remember our freezer paper has a waxy side and a paper side and your number should be on your paper. So this waxy side is what allows it to stick to my fabric when I use an iron with it. And it's not going to leave any residue or anything sticky on it. So we're just going to lay our our, uh, leaves here on our fabric and we're going to press them down. And you just need to leave the iron sit just for a few seconds on it and move to the next one. And remember, these are reusable. They're not one use only. You can do all of your roses for this out of one uh, cutting of a rose template here. Now we're going to cut out our leaf. And uh, these are nice fabric scissors, very sharp. We're going to cut and... I want you to use the whole blade when you cut so you don't get jagged edges. And we're going to move our fabric, not the scissors. That's the correct way to cut this. So as you can see, I'm cutting using the entire blade. And what is turning here is my fabric, not uh, my scissors. You'll get a much cleaner edge if you use that technique. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and build our roses. We have all of our petals cut out. And you're going to need this template sheet, which is in your pattern. And this is going to allow us to put our petals in the correct order. So you can do this one of two ways. Um, you can, if you don't have a light box, you can tape this to a window. Just take a little piece of tape and tape it to the window to hold it on for you. Or use the same little piece of tape and tape it onto a light box here. Okay, now we're going to start placing our pieces on our template. And remember, you need to take your template piece off. So it's just ironed on there. It should, if you scoot them sideways here, they should come apart. Or you can just peel up one edge. So I'll put my template away. And this is piece number one. And I lay it on here. Now, I'm sure you can see in the camera that this piece is just slightly larger than my line here. And that's what I want because these pieces are going to overlap each other. So we have piece number one here. Then we're going to add piece number two. And you see this is going to be underneath this piece here. 
And here we have number three. Okay, then we're going to keep following in the numeric order. One, two, three. This is going to be my piece number four. Then there is number five. And now you can start to see where the pieces on the bottom will lay underneath. Now, Robin, when, about this point, should we start gluing? Yes, it would be very helpful for you to keep this all in order if you just add some glue to it. Now this glue we've talked about, it's water soluble and you only need a dab. So I'm just going to lift this up here. And remember, I don't want this anywhere near where my stitching is. So I'm going to make sure my leaf is in the right spot and then just press this down. And that leaf will not go anywhere now. we go. Okay, now this one I'm not going to glue down yet. I want to add these other pieces in before I do, but now my leaves are right there and they're not going to get uh, lost. Okay, now we're going to go to number six and we're going to lay it down there and then number seven And last is number eight. Now we're going to go ahead and just glue all of these down, just like I did the leaves, so that everything is glued down, stuck together, and we're ready to take the whole rose and put it on our top. We have our rose all put together now, and we're going to place it on our topper. And uh, on my other three roses, I had it so the leaves were coming out toward the edges. I like that way. But if you don't want to do it that way, you can put them at an angle. You can make them all different. It's your choice. So Robin, what do you think we should do? We're going to place it on here. Well, we're going to decide where on here, and we want to put it in the center of our white area here. Right. And to get it to hold into that so we can sew it, we're going to glue it once again. All so right. I will take my pre-assembled rows, and I'm just going to flip it over like this. And we're going to add our glue, once again, in small amounts. And stay away from your stitching line. Remember, we're going to have to stitch this down. So I'm just going to put some glue out here to hold it down for you, okay? Great. Now, I'll go ahead and put it down here, and that's the nice thing about this glue. If you get it in the wrong spot, you can take it off. Okay, let's just put it, yeah, there. That's perfect. Okay, how's that work that for you? That looks good. Okay. That looks great. So we're just going to mush it down, and that's a <laughs> quilting term, mushing. And it should hold us there, and it's ready for stitching. Okay. Now we're going to get ready to sew, and I just wanted to quick, quickly show you the thread that we're going to be using. Now this is a variegated thread, so if I lay it out here, you can see we got greens and we've got reds, pinks. And so when we're going through and we're starting to stitch, we don't have to take the time and change for every color that we're using. That's where the variegation comes in really handy. Now when I start to stitch, I'm going to start in the center. And that way I'm just going to come around here about a fourth of an inch. Don't mark your uh, pieces of fabric or anything like that because it's not important. But about a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to go around here. I'm going to come back out. Now, I'm not going to pick up my thread. I'm just going to keep on going. And so I don't have to stop all the time. I'm going to come around here and do that one. And that way it goes very, very fast. And it's, it's fun to do. I have my roses all sewn down now. And you guys go ahead and do that too. And in our next episode, we're going to get out our batting and our backing, and we'll start quilting our quilt and putting our binding on. So until then, 